Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz. Sponsored by Georgia Power. Good morning and thanks for joining us. As we wrap up the year, we want to take a look back at some of the top business trends, not just of 2019, but of the decade. The business landscape has changed significantly since 2009. Ten years ago, the nation and the metro Atlanta area were coming out of the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. One sector of the economy that's seen significant change, the local housing market. Atlanta had one of the nation's highest foreclosure rates. Many of those homes, especially in the city's core, abandoned. Fast forward to today, and in-town Atlanta is teeming with new apartment towers and townhomes. But new construction of single-family homes is still sluggish by comparison. Unfortunately, the, the cost to build a home today is uh, mo moving at a very rapid rate upwards. Uh, nowhere close to people's incomes, in fact, so uh, it's not translating over to the single family part of the e equation. Home prices are well above recession levels, but to some new in town residents, it may be worth it to live close to work. However, the cost to own or rent within the city limits is pricing some existing residents out. Reports from Zillow and S&P Case Shiller show between 2011 and 2017, average rents in the metro area increased 35 percent. The average sales price rose 60 percent. In June, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms unveiled a $1 billion plan to add 20,000 workforce housing units. You want to make sure that if it's someone making minimum wage, that they can also they, they can afford to live in the city in the same way that someone who may be making $40,000 a year can afford to live in the city. The Atlanta Regional Commission now has an interactive website that lets local officials create solutions for affordable housing. It provides statistics and specific strategies for each of the 10 housing submarkets in the region. Well, more large companies are calling Georgia home. There were 14 Fortune 500 firms based in Georgia back in 2010. This year, that number increased to 18. One notable addition, railroad giant Norfolk Southern. During the last decade, more technology firms have also been taking an interest in the region. Google plans to add hundreds of jobs at a new tower in Midtown. Atlantic Station has been linked to early interest from Microsoft. Tesla is also considering expanding there. But Atlanta's also losing a longtime corporate citizen. SunTrust Bank has merged with BB&T to form Truist. That new company will be based in Charlotte. Well, the number of large firms, including BlackRock and Google, are flocking to offices near the Atlanta Beltline's East Side Trail. In 2009, that part of the Beltline was just dirt and gravel. With demand for more urban style living and creative workspaces, the Beltline estimates that by 2030, it could attract $10 billion in private investment across the city. Atlanta Beltline CEO Clyde Higgs says the 22 mile loop is more than a series of trails. It's a job creation engine. Right now, we are forecasting about 18,000 permanent jobs that have been created along the, the Beltline corridor. That, that's, that's significant. Someone in community can literally walk to a job uh, that is paying a livable wage. And that's what we're trying to do for the Beltline is bring the entire solution. Well, the trend of urbanization extends beyond the Beltline. In 2009, the Gulch in downtown Atlanta was a series of parking lots and railroad tracks. Now that area has been renamed Centennial Yards. The developer CIM Group is transforming the 50 acre site to include shops, hotels and offices. Georgia has seen more lights, cameras and action from the film sector during the past decade. The Georgia Entertainment Industry Investment Act kicked off in 2008, offering a 20 percent tax credit for qualifying film companies. That tax perk has attracted hit shows, movies and filmmaking facilities. Pinewood Atlanta Studios has churned out a series of blockbusters, including the highest grossing film of all time, last summer's Marvel's Avengers Endgame. Just last month, Tyler Perry unveiled his new studio at Fort McPherson. The 330-acre property has 12 sound stages. Earlier this year, several media companies, including Disney, Netflix, and Warner Media, said they would take a cautious approach to doing business in Georgia because of the state's new anti-abortion law. In October, a federal judge blocked the law from taking effect on January 1st. Atlanta's sports sector has made some major trades and scored some significant wins since 2009. The Hawks' home, Phillips Arena, has become State Farm Arena. The Braves moved to Cobb County into a new stadium, SunTrust Park. Meanwhile, the team's former home, Turner Field, is now owned by Georgia State University. 
The Georgia Dome was demolished in 2017, making room for the Atlanta Falcons new home, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That's where the city hosted Super Bowl 53 earlier this year. The Benz is also home to one of Atlanta's newest professional sports teams, Atlanta United. Forbes ranks the five stripes the most valuable Major League Soccer team worth $500 million. Coming up, a smarter way to park. The CEO of Park Mobile gives us the download on how the revolutionary app is taking the hassle out of finding a parking space. And later, we flip through the pages of time. Pictures from some of the city's most unforgettable moments over the past decade. But before we go to break, it's time for our biz quiz. How much money does Atlanta generate from parking tickets each year? Is it $1 million, $2.5 million, $5.5 million, or $7 million? We'll have the answer when we return. <laughs> 